So we had tefillah together, let's not do tzedakah together, let's have prayer together, and charity together, and now a thought, a thought again together. This Shabbos is called Shabbos Parshas Poro, Shabbos of the Red Heifer. We're going to be reading the special section of the Torah mitzvah of the Torah commandment about the Red Heifer in Parshas Chukas. It's one of the four parshiot, as it's called, the four parshiot before, from Shabbos Vachim Odor until before Pesach. We had first one was Shabbos Kolim, the Shabbos of giving the half a shekel, which was before the month of Odor. Last week we had the Shabbos before Purim, we had Shabbos Zohar, the remembering of Amalek. This week is Shabbos Parshas Porah, and then we're going to have Shabbos Achidish. What is Parshas Porah? Pora is, we're reading the Torah commandment about the red heifer, that when a person became spiritually unfit, spiritually unclean, by coming in contact with death, where the person now is called Tome, which doesn't allow the person to enter into the Holy Temple, which doesn't allow the person to eat of a sacrifice. And since in the month of Nisan, we all have to bring the Korban Pesach, the Paschal Lamb, so we all must be tohoir, we all must be pure, and therefore we read the uh, section of the mitzvah, that is, of Torah, to remind us about the importance of purity, to remind us of the importance of being spiritually fit. It is also connected to Purim in a certain way, as the Rebbe explains. Why? Because the person becomes spiritually unfit, by having been in contact with death, meaning when the person is lifeless, when a person is connected to apathy, when a person is connected to no purpose, no meaning, no goal in life. And that's called spiritually unfit. How does one come out of this? As the Torah, the Medrash says that Moshe Rabbeinu was very concerned. Is there any remedy for this kind of a situation. And God told them the red heifer. The red heifer represents the burning down the entire animal into ashes. In other words, breaking down the personal ego, the animalistic aspect of our life, breaking it down completely, down to ashes. And then we can rebuild and give new life, new vitality, new purpose, no goal, no enthusiasm, no excitement, holiness, warmth, life. This is also connected to Purim. <coughs> <coughs> because in Purim, when the Jewish people face the gravest of dangers, total annihilation by the decree of Achashverosh through the intervention of Haman, the wicked Haman, after having shed their lifestyle, having let go of their past behavior and connected to the teachings and the guidance of Mordechai, that's when this moment of the greatest danger was transformed into the moment of the greatest happiness, the greatest yamt, the greatest simcha of Purim. So that transformation of negativity, of apathy, to life, livelihood, and exciting life. So this is what we're going to be reading this week on Shabbos Parshas Poro. But an interesting thought about the Rambam, where the Rambam describes all the laws of Poro, and then uncharacteristic, he mentions that from Moshe Rabbeinu until Ezra, who was the last one, excuse me, from Moshe Rabbeinu, who did the first one, the second one Ezra Sefer made, and then he said there was seven more which was prepared throughout the entire history until the destruction of the temple. The, so in it says there was a total of nine para adumo red heifers which were prepared in the temple. And the last one he says will do Melech HaMashiach. Vasiris Yasa Melech HaMashiach and the tenth one Mashiach will make. Mehera Yegolah speedily should be revealed. Amen Keni Herotzin may that be so. And the question is, the Rambam is, first of all, not a history book, and the Rambam is not a prayer book. How come the Rambam mentions that 
Nine of them were made the tenth one Mashiach will do, and may he reveal himself. So the Rabbi points out, the, Rabbi is, the Rambam is teaching is a very specific halakha, that whenever we have an opportunity to pray for the coming of Mashiach, one should do so. In other words, related to Paraduma, purity, Mashiach is all about infinite life, ultimate life, the most meaningful life. Compared to the time of Mashiach, what we're living today is definitely spiritually, quote-unquote, not fit enough. So we have to search, pray, quest, request for that moment to happen, and that's all part of the mitzvah of Paraduma. At any given time, we should expect it to happen, and at every given moment, we should pray for the ultimate revelation of Mashiach. So please, God, make it happen now.